In this video, you're going to learn about what exactly is the perpendicular bisector theorem and what's the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem and how do we use those two theorems to solve some problems. So let's dive into this video. So when we talk about a perpendicular bisector, what does that mean? Well, perpendicular means it's at a right angle. Bisect means it cuts it into two equal parts. So it cuts a segment in half, goes right through the midpoint. But what the perpendicular bisector theorem tells us is if I pick a point on this perpendicular bisector of this segment, right, any, anywhere along this perpendicular bisector, say like right here, what do I know about this length and this length? So the distance from the point on the perpendicular bisector to both endpoints of the segment. What do you know about those two lengths? Well, they're going to be congruent. And you learned in previous lessons when you proved triangles congruent, remember, if this is a right angle, this has to be a right angle. This side is shared between these two triangles by the reflexive property. And remember you learned the side angle side, side angle side, that's enough to prove that the two triangles are congruent to each other, which means by the CPCTC, the corresponding parts of congruent triangles will be congruent. Basically, if you fold this, these two are gonna match up with one another and they're gonna be the same length because the two triangles are congruent. So that's what the perpendicular bisector theorem is. It just says, again, let's just go through it again. So if you have a segment and you have a perpendicular bisector, so it's perpendicular at right angles and it bisects or cuts that in half, and you pick a point anywhere along that perpendicular bisector, say right here, what do you know about this length and this length? They have to be congruent by the perpendicular bisector theorem. Okay, now what's the converse? Well, we know from earlier in geometry, the converse is like saying that conditional statement in reverse, essentially. You're switching the hypothesis and the conclusion. And so what it's saying is that, say you have a segment, and you have a point that's not on that segment, and you measure the distances uh, to the two endpoints, and you find that they're congruent, what do you know about that point? It has to lie on the perpendicular bisector, right? So notice what we can do here. If I drop a perpendicular, right? Perpendicular means it's at a right angle, okay? And I know that this is the same length in this triangle as it in this triangle because it's shared, right? That's the reflexive property. And I know that these two triangles are congruent by the hypotenuse leg. Remember when we proved triangles congruent by HL, the hypotenuse leg? So if the two triangles are congruent, then by CPCTC or the corresponding parts of congruent triangles, all the parts that match up will be congruent, meaning these two segments are congruent which means that what type of a line is this? It's a perpendicular bisector because it bisects, it cuts it in half, and it's at a right angle. So let's look at that again in slow motion, kind of like when you're watching sports, they do the replay. This is the replay, right? We have our segment, okay? And we have a point that's not on that segment. And we draw two segments to the endpoints of that original segment, and we find out that they're the same length. What does it tell us about this point? It must lie on the perpendicular bisector. Okay, now let's apply those theorems, the perpendicular bisector theorem and the converse to solve this problem number one. So how can we find out the length of DC? How can we find out what X is? Well, let's look at the clues, right? We know that this is perpendicular because of the right angle, and we know it's bisecting because these two segments are congruent. That means that D is on the perpendicular bisector of segment AC. So if we pick a point on that perpendicular bisector, what do we know about the distance to the endpoints of the segment? They're the same. And again, if you ever forget this, use what we, you learned or what we talked about uh, proving triangles congruent, and you can see that, oh, this is shared between the two triangles. I have side angle side, side angle side by CPCTC. The corresponding parts are congruent, right? Okay, for number two now, let's look at what we have. We wanna solve for X we can see that we have this point M, which is not on segment LN, and the distance to the endpoints is the same. See how these are both 15? What does that tell us about point M? It lies on the perpendicular bisector. We already can see that it's perpendicular, right? But it's gonna lie on that perpendicular bisector uh, because the distance to the endpoints is the same. Now again, if you forget, you can prove it to yourself fairly quickly. You say, well, this segment is shared between the two triangles, so it's congruent in both triangles by the reflexive property. The hypotenuses are congruent, this leg is congruent, and they're both right triangles. So by the hypotenuse leg, the two triangles are congruent. By CPCTC, the corresponding parts are gonna be congruent. So these are equal to each other. So if we solve this equation, 2x minus three equals x plus six. Let's subtract x from both sides. Let's add three to both sides. We're getting x is equal to 
nine, and you got it. So great job. Now, if you like the way that I explain things and you wanna learn more about geometry, I'm gonna put a playlist right there that goes through 11 videos working you through the important concepts and problems that you encounter in a typical geometry course or class. So follow me to that playlist and I'll see you over in those videos.